Hello, Monday. <laughs> oh boy, coming at you live here at Inside Production Studios in Phoenix, Arizona. My name is Robert Morales, and it's Monday Market 15, the 15 minute show that tends to take about 30 or so. It happens. So, bringing you uh, the most up to date information about the Phoenix market. I'll be taking questions here on the broadcast. Just add them in the comments section below, and I'll try to get to them as we go. Uh, we're here live, of course. So, Stuff happens by mistake, sometimes with intent, but that's what we do. Uh, be sure to give us a heart emoji uh, because we love those loves. And if you're watching us on YouTube right now, hit that subscribe button because we like it when you watch our show. So why not? So here, today is Monday, the beginning of March, first day. I normally do this stuff like at two o'clock, but man, it's been a hell of a day. <laughs> so, uh crazy market still things are still going out there you know I, I bring you guys information every week just to talk about stuff in real estate stuff that's happening and um really uh last week was kind of a doozy as far as stock market goes and when stuff like that happens um the thing i concern myself with the most in any kind of investment even with real estate is really other people <laughs> i know myself I know what I am capable of. I know uh, my misgivings, but I cannot control for other people. So um, it's kind of cool to kind of watch the stocks and the stock market. If, if you guys, uh, you know, watch our Friday show, we kind of get into that too. So uh, tune in on Fridays here at uh, our CEO network for those uh, finance Fridays, <laughs> the noon hour. Uh, but we're about three and a half hours late for today's show. Crazy day today. So um, I think everybody uh, that I know is is into real estate now. <laughs> Either I'm getting questions about uh, buying, selling, uh, is it a good time? All this stuff, like it's just it's it's amassing into this month. I had a feeling, and if you guys watch the shows before, uh, over the last couple of weeks, I, I felt things were going to be kind of shifting a lot in March. And if today is any indication of what the rest of the month is looking like then uh, we're in for uh, some crazy shiznats out there. So um, your Monday market 15, so I'm bringing information as it, as it is relevant. The thing that frustrates me right now with this market, any kind of reporting, anything that's going on is, is the amount of like non-reporting that's going on. It's like amazing to me. I'm, I watch labor statistics. I watch unemployment. I kind of watch other reports and a lot of it is just like dragging a lot further along. You know, uh, our unemployment numbers, as far as Arizona goes, are still not up to date. Let me show you guys. They're still reporting as of December. Here, I'll show you guys real quick so you guys can see what I look at. So the like the unemployment right now is reporting from December. And I'm like, it normally updates about the third week of every month. And we're well into uh, March now, first day of March. Still don't see any January numbers. So uh, stuff like that is obviously concerning. And, you know, uh, the conspiracy mind in me thinks, you know, what, uh, you know, who's withholding the information. I need this information. I need to make decisions for me. I need to make, help you guys make decisions too. I'm not a financial advisor, by the way. So any financial advice or anything that is shared on the show is a merely opinion. It's merely commentary. It's all kind of just fun stuff that we get to talk to. So again, if you have any questions and stuff, I'll try to get to them. Uh, just go ahead and type them down below. Uh, anything relating to houses, Sometimes we talk about relationships and sometimes we talk about uh, psychological stuff and other things, finance, whatever, whatever you guys want to ask, we're here for it. However, we're mostly here to talk about real estate. So again, going back to that whole frustrating thing. So I, I try to put two things together. I try to find the reporting so I can report to you guys kind of the, the numbers and the statistics out there, what's happening. And then, and then real world stuff, the stuff that I'm actually witnessing and seeing. So, um, you know, one of the things that I wanted to kind of bring across right now is the amount of offers and things that are going on. So buyers are still having a hard time. I think if you're a buyer out there looking for that house, still having a hard time submitting your offer, sometimes not even getting calls back. Um, if your offer was accepted, even looked at, I mean, sometimes I, I submit a bunch of offers and I hope to get an email or at least a phone call, maybe a text message back saying, Hey, uh, we got your offer. Sometimes you don't even get that. So um, uh, frustrating, you know, uh, when you have a lot of, I think there's a lot of new agents out there that don't know kind of the, the, the rapport that you, you tend to build, even with other agents and stuff too. A lot of crazy stuff going on. People submitting offers and not really uh, doing comps just, just to submit an offer. It's crazy out there. 
So um, the one thing I wanted to kind of share as far as observation goes, about two months ago, submitting offers for clients and again, looking for myself, looking for a house. If anybody has a house out in uh, Gilbert area, approximately, you know, anywhere from 350 to 450, give me a call. I might, I might want to buy it. But, uh, <laughs> you know, as I'm going out there and I'm making these offers, um, January-ish, I'd get, uh, I'd submit an offer, talk to the agent. Um, on that house, you would get about a response of like a 40 or, you know, 40 or 45 offers on a, on a single house in January. Come February, that's coming down to about 30. Now, the really interesting thing, the really thing that caught my attention, um, I think for this last week, was the number of offers that houses are getting. So like, again, January, getting about 30, 40 offers on a house. You know, this last uh, couple houses that uh, we made offers on, only getting about 10 to 12. So that kind of like, boop. you know, all you really need is one. I mean, at the end of the day, as long as you get like two offers, you have multiple offers. But going from like 42 months ago to now about 10, 12 kind of sparked a little, one of those little things up in my head. Like, hey, maybe you should look into this a little bit more. So um, I did want to share a little something I found and something I'm going to kind of watch, not something that's interesting. It's just more of like, hey, this kind of, you know, kind of keep an eye on this kind of stuff. Um, I'm going to go to this report. So this is a cumulative days on market report. This, uh, if you notice here, we started the, the, the year at about uh, 40 days on market. So this is a house that's listed and it's on market for, you know, 40 days or so. And as you kind of see the weeks preceding, so this is week one in January, weeks preceding, you can kind of see it kind of stay around that 40-ish area, 40 days on market area. This is uh, this is like, um, uh-oh, we screwed up. This is like week nine, right? So this is the beginning of the week, and we're only like, it's only Monday. And so uh, you can kind of see it plateauing. And what I'm going to kind of keep an eye on to see if it starts going up. Starts going up means houses are on market a little bit longer than they should. And uh, which is also an indication for you buyers out there, for people looking for houses. If uh, houses are on market a little bit longer, that's hopefully a determinant of supply. There may be houses longer. So houses may be looked at a little bit more. Um, and also an indication, I believe, of increased supply. So that that plateauing right there is, is one of those... Bleep, kind of red flags, kind of, well, maybe not red flag, orange flags, yellow flag, whatever color flag you want to add to that kind of like spurred a little thing in my head for you buyers out there. So again, something to kind of, as a buyer, as a seller, it's like, Hey, if you get like one or two offers on a house, you list it, you're doing good. You're, you're doing fine. You'll be fine. But to go from that 40 in January to now about 12 offers a house, that's a, again, one of those uh, orange color flags. And I'm going to watch that report. Another thing too, that kind of caught my attention since I was looking at days on market was also uh, this one, it's deeds of trust. So as you can see here in the, in the uh, quarters preceding or uh, preceding, uh, what is it? Quarter two. So March, 2020, uh, these are the number of houses sold to a third party. So um you know, you go in foreclosure and then the house is sold to a third party participant, uh, a bank or whatever. Um, these are houses that are reverted back to the owner. Um, as you can see in quarters past, we're running at about 60, 70 uh, houses, maybe 80 here, 80 houses going to foreclosure that were just sold off. And then as we had the mortgage moratorium, uh, quarter, quarter, I guess March is quarter one. So quarter one, quarter two, as, as the moratorium hits, uh, that, that just completely diminishes. But the, the curious note is that you have all these houses in between. So you have all these months of houses going to foreclosure being sold off to like very few now. Um, you have the shadow supply coming up. But what I found interesting this last quarter, or at least last couple of months, is this, this shot up a little bit. So I'm going to be watching this. Uh, I don't know if this is growing. I don't know if the foreclosures being are, are up and coming. There's more, uh, but they're out there. I mean, you can't go from, you know, 40 to 70 a month or every quarter to like only seven and 13. There's, there's just a shadow area here of foreclosures not being sold off. So that's, again, one of those things that kind of 
orange flag, whatever color, orange, yellow, fuchsia. I don't pick a color <laughs> other than red. So that's one of those things I want to, you know, kind of keep in mind of regarding kind of the shifts in this market and kind of seeing where things are going. But um, with the treasury going up too, this is an indicator of uh, mortgage rates uh, potentially rising. Um, this is another thing I kind of keep an eye on. It, it, it went up, let me see if I can get that. Went up last week. And so kind of star, uh, started a little spur in the, uh, in the stock market. And as you can see, kind of, Traveled down over the weekend and kind of bellowed out about 1.4 ish, you know, 1.42. But a sharp incline over these last few weeks. So interest rates um, uh, may be rising or continue to rise, but they're definitely on an onward, uh, upward slope. So, again, something to kind of watch out for regarding inventory or supply. If you're a buyer out there looking for a house, uh, that could be one of those indicators. Well, there's going to be less people who are going to be qualified if the interest rate continues to rise. Cause right now so many people are being qualified just because the interest rate is a little bit lower. So many factors. And again, uh, one of those last things that kind of watching uh, regarding supply, whether, you know, people should buy or sell right now, it's all kind of dependent on your situation, what you want to do. Um, opinion wise, and I'm already past 15 minutes. <laughs> Opinion wise, I think there's going to be some definite shifts. Um, the eviction moratorium is, I believe, ending in uh, the end of this month. So that's something to, you know, kind of watch out for. I think current legislation, uh, the stuff that passed the House um, is indicative of more stimulus, but that still has to pass the Senate. It's not in the law. It hasn't been signed yet. And so um, that stimulus being passed over the weekend caused a spike in the stock market. So the, the things to kind of watch out for, again, I think the biggest thing. Uh, that you can be mindful of is fear, people's agitation. You know, if people start pulling out of the stock market, if start people start doing foolish things regarding their finances, that definitely has an impact on our housing market and the direction it's going. So again, if you have any comments, questions, go ahead and type them in and I'll either get to them next week, today, tomorrow, some other time. Uh, I think we're about 15 minutes. Look at that. <laughs> so uh, the interesting thing this weekend, um, or at least uh, this this last weekend, I did um, I did volunteer at a food drive, uh, packaging up vegetables, you know, for needy families. And and the one thing I did notice again, what I want to bring is kind of mirror or match what the reporting says with what I'm seeing out there, and you know, the unemployment, the things that I think real people real buyers are experiencing are significant. You know, when I see a number of Teslas, when I see a number of BMWs coming through at a $12 a food box food drive, that is concerning as to, you know, the unemployment, what's really happening out there. And uh, the thing that frustrates me is when you have organizations, uh, news reports, um, even, even public websites uh, like the, the labor um, the U.S. Bureau of Labor Statistics, when they're not fully reporting up-to-date information, um, it, it causes some concern. And, and you know, draw from that whatever you want, whatever conspiracy you want to draw from that. But at the end of the day, we have to make decisions for our families and what we do, you know, uh, everything we do, uh, it's particularly your house affects us and, and our families. So um, if you have any questions or anything else, I think, I think we'll end it there. But uh, what I see, um, and my opinion is, if you're looking at selling, this is probably the peak of the market. Again, it's an opinion, um, and you can kind of digest whatever it is based on the information that I'm showing you based on your own information. Um, I, I, think, I think we're pretty much at ahead, you know, and um, in the next few months, we'll really be telling you. And I really hope, uh, you know, people do indicate and do say that there is a potential crash. I really hope not. I mean, at the end of the day, I hope that there's not a crash because it just makes things challenging for everybody. And it makes things challenging for me too, to help, you know, people out, you know, uh, people get into this, uh, buy their home, buy their dream in order to see that dream fulfilled, you know, and, um, hopefully sell it off and buy, buy a bigger dream, uh, expand their family, not worry so much. You, you definitely want that of people. But, um, and, and so much when you get crazy stuff like this, it doesn't really make that a reality for some. So my hope is that, you know, we kind of calm stuff down a little bit. 
and I really hope there's not a crash, but there are some definite things that you have to be mindful of. Some things you have to be, you know, uh, make decisions on, you know, based on the circumstances today. You can watch anything and everything from, you know, whatever politics, uh, look at any kind of news, whatever you want. At the end of the day, it's about uh, a decision you need to make for your family. And hopefully the information I provide helps in that decision. So if you have any questions, even after the show, whatever it is, go ahead and um, type them in. Yeah, IM me, DM me, whatever, whatever you need to. Um, I have my cell phone somewhere on there too. You can always text. Don't call after 11, you know, Violet kind of questions that. She looks at me a little weird. So, oh boy. All right. So we'll see you guys uh, maybe, uh, maybe next week. And um, hang in there if you're uh, doing stuff that you need to do. You know, I forgot my rolling credit. I don't have my rolling credits up. So this is what a heavy day is. So if you guys have any questions, we'll catch you guys soon. Uh, Robert Morales, uh, Morales Group um, of HomeSmart, as well as RCO Network. We'll catch you guys next Monday. Uh, peace, y'all. <laughs>